Use the second derivative test to identify any critical points and determine what each critical point is. Okay, the function is f of x, y is equal to 7x squared, y plus 9xy squared. Okay, first, to find the critical points, we need to take the, the partial derivatives with respect to x and y. So the derivative with respect to x, we treat the y as a constant. So that's going to be 14xy plus 9y squared. And then we take the derivative with respect to y, you treat the x as constant. So that's 7x squared plus 18xy. Set each one of these equal to 0. For the first equation, we can factor out a y and get 14x plus 9y. And the bottom equation, we have an x outside, and then it's 7x plus 18y. In the top one, either y is 0, or we set 14x plus 9y equal to 0, and get y is negative 14 over 9x. Similarly, the bottom equation, x is 0, or negative 18 over 7y. Now notice if we plug in negative 14 over 9 into the bottom equation, so it would be x times 7x plus 18 times negative 14 over 9, x. You get x times 7x, and then this will be minus, uh, let's see, 18 over 9 is 2. 2 times negative 14 is negative 28x. So it's x times negative 14, no, negative 21x. And so, yeah, that's negative 21x squared. And that's 0 only when x is 0. Okay, so then we can use the other fact. So the negative 18 over 7y, plug that in for x on the top. Fourteen over seven is two, times negative eighteen is negative thirty-six. Add these. Negative thirty-six plus nine is uh, negative twenty-seven. So that's negative twenty-seven y squared. If you set that equal to zero, you also get y is zero. So it's clear that y is zero, x is zero. That's the critical point. Okay. Now the next step will be to identify what this critical point is. So for that, we need to take the second derivatives. Okay, let's take the second derivative with respect to x, then y. So that leaves us to take the, this derivative with respect to y. That's 14x plus 18y. Now we can take the second derivative with respect to x and this with respect to y. So take this derivative with respect to x. That's 14y, and this is 18x. So when we uh, draw a matrix here for the determinant, we plug in 0, 0, the critical point, into our second derivatives. Okay. But notice, when I plug in 0, 0 into the second derivatives, all the derivatives are 0. Okay. So in that case, the determinant is 0, and so the test is inconclusive. Okay, next example. So here we're going to be looking at Lagrange multipliers. And so we want to maxim find the maximum and minimum values of the function subject to the given constraint. Okay, so the function is f of x, y equals x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So this should be a z here. And x, y, z is equal to 4. Okay, so first we want to set the partial derivatives equal to lambda times a partial. So here we're going to call g of x, y, z as just x, y, z minus 4. So just bring the 4 over. We'll define that as g. And so we take the, that equation, respect to, the derivative of that with respect to x, then you set the partials with respect to y equal to each other, and then z. 
So first, take the derivative with respect to x. On the left here is 2x, and on the right here is just yz. Then we take the derivative with respect to y, we get 2y in the lambda xz. And then for z, similarly, we get 2z is equal to lambda times xy. Now at this point, let's just take, we can take any two equations. Um, so why don't we just take the first two for now. So we'll have 2x over 2y equals lambda yz over lambda xz. The twos are going to cancel. Lambdas are going to cancel, and then the z's are going to cancel. So you have xy, x over y equals y over x. Cross multiply, you get x squared equals y squared. Take the square root, that means the absolute value of x is equal to the absolute value of y. Okay, so that's just taking equation one and two. Now what if we take equation two and three. Well, same story here. You're, you're just going to divide 2y over 2z and lambda xz over lambda xy. Twos are going to cancel. Lambdas are going to cancel. X are going to cancel. Y over z equals z over y. Same story. We get the absolute value y equals the absolute value z. And then we'll do this one more time with equation one and equation three. 2x over 2z equals lambda yz over lambda xy. And so for that, uh, well, we'll have absolute value of x equal absolute value of z. So what we found out here is that absolute value of x is equal to absolute value of y from this, and then absolute value of y is equal to absolute value of z. So all three of these are satisfied. So what we know is that they're all equal. Okay. Now, the constraint here, we know it's x times y times z. We know that these values are all the same. So if you want to maximize, well, they should all be positive. Because whenever you multiply by positive numbers, then you know you're going to get a positive number. You're, that's going to be greater. So let's look at instead. Let's look at this one instead. So we'll substitute. Well, so we'll assume x and y and z are all equal without the absolute value. Then you'll have x cubed equals four, and so x will be uh, the cube root of four. Okay. And because x and y and z are equal, we know that these x, y, and z are all going to be 4 to the 1 third power. And, and so this, we'll need to plug this in for x, y, and z, and we get 7.55953. Or we can have two of them being negative and one of them being positive. So x and y can both be negative, let's say, so then z would be positive. Or you can have you know, y and z being negative, x being positive, or x and z being negative, and y being positive. So there's many uh, combinations that you can have here. Because at the end of the day, you just want the absolute values to be equal. And notice here, OK, well, we found 7.55953 as our answer. But is that a maximum or a minimum? Well, let's look back here at our function. This function, we know, gets bigger and bigger. So the best you can do is have a minimum of this thing subject to the constraint. So this is a minimum.